we're uh, we're going to go ahead and kick it off so we can try to keep at least a little bit of a schedule rolling. Um, so no conference would start any better than the way we've started the last few years, and that's with my very favorite mayor of Clayton, Ms. Norma Zimmer. Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for coming out in this kind of weather. This shows that these are the real people that really care when they show up here in the wintertime. We love to see in the summer, but winter's special. And I think that we have just really enjoyed this year working with John Peach. He was kind of new to me to work with, and it's been a pleasure. And he's convinced me that I can't use a plastic bottle anymore, and I'm pretty good at it. And I'm going <laughs> to. So we can keep this gin clear water out here by not having a plastic bottle. Pretty simple, right? And now with these new straws, reusable, this is pretty unique. And to be here in Clayton, New York, on the St. Lawrence River in February is a treat for us, a treat for you. Thank you for coming. When Norma says she's going to keep it brief, she is not kidding. That, that may be the most I've heard her talk in uh, two months, and I have breakfast with her three or four times a week. So thanks, Norma. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Jeff Garnsey. I'm your proud president, board president of Save the River, and I will also be brief. Welcome, welcome to our 30th annual winter conference. And my main focus is to make sure that the folks here know who brought this all together. And it really starts with our four staff members, which this is our first full year back at full capacity with four staff members, and it's changing the focus and the nature of our mission because we can take, instead of tiny, tiny little bites, we can take great big swaths in different directions, and all the programs are coming back as a result of that. So please put your hands together for Bridget, Margaret, Kendall, and Patricia. If you just stand up, say hello. <laughs> And likewise, we have a much smaller but very, very energized board. Um, action items are being completed at a rate that I've not seen since I've been on the board, and I'm still the youngster of the board pretty much until I hit 20 years, I think uh, I can continue to use that, right? Um, so we have Lauren Troop, Robin Lucas, Bill Grader, and Rick Gregoire with us today. If you guys can just stand up and wave. And normally John Peach would be added to that list, but he shifted gears and bailed us out of a relatively large hole a uh, few months ago. And if you pay close attention at all, you can see that there are more moving parts with Save the River right now than we've had in a long, long time. And a great deal of that has to do with focusing on what's going on at the end of our dock. Uh, as much over the horizon, but a, a similar focus locally, and it's being noticed because you can go into Bella's or the Cove any day during the season, and you're gonna see John schmoozing with somebody with one hand on the menu and the other hand on his checkbook, and we really, really were lacking in that for a while, and that's a big, big piece of why we're able to afford a staff that Save the River deserves. And with no further ado, I'd like to introduce our amazing executive director, Mr. John Peach. Thank you, Jeff. And thanks to our wonderful Save the River staff for preparing everything for today. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to Save the River's 30th Winter Environmental Conference, and it's in our 41st year. I just want to give you a brief update on the river. Plan 2014 has been in place and in a, for two years, and an initial adaptive management review has been completed with no recommended changes. There was a caveat that if additional ongoing investigation warrants recommended changes, 
the committee will revisit the plan. And we expect the plan will face challenges once the new IJC commissioners are confirmed and seated. Education, last year 1,372 students and 100 educators participated in Save the Rivers in the Schools and on the Water programs using grade appropriate curricula for K-12. Save the River developed with local teachers that curriculum. Many of the students took part in our on the water educational boat environmental tours where we get students out on the water and at the Minna Anthony Common Nature Center for hands-on science experience. And over 400 junior river keepers were trained last year. In 2019 will be the 11th year of in the schools and on the water. And to be able to say that Save the River has helped educate over 10,000 students in 10 years is quite an accomplishment. And these programs have been supported for many years by the Fresh Sound Foundation. Without the support of Fresh Sound, these programs would never have developed to the level that they've achieved today. Our bass catch and release was reinvigorated with the start of the 2018 bass season. Save the River staff participated in three tournaments and made recommendations to tournament directors about better fish handling practices, such as hold the fish horizontally with two hands when taking photos, keep water in the fish bags when transporting them, monitor the live well temperatures and oxygen content, and bring 80 pounds of ice each day, and add ice to the live wells every one and a half to two hours, and use rubber non-netted nets when landing the fish. Muskie catch and release has been ongoing for many years with over a thousand limit sized fish released as a result of Save the Rivers program to give the releasing angler a Michael Ringer print. Turn monitoring and restoration. Save the River has been monitoring and restoring habitat for common terns on nav cell markers 209 and 213 for the past 22 years. This year was our best year yet with 345 birds banded and released. And geographical sections of this project are done in conjunction with TILT and others. And the program is under guidance of Dr. Lee Harper, who's here somewhere. Where's Lee? He's back there. If you could just stand up. Lee's been running this program for years and a great friend of the river. And he's a little bit later, he's going to become a movie star when you get to see the video that our own Elaine Tack did. It's called It's Hard to Be a Turn. So I'll sort of leave it at that. We've got a movie star in the room. Our annual Riverkeeper Water Quality Monitoring Program was completed last August with six U.S. sites being monitored and all passed New York State criteria each week. A hundred shoal markers are floated each year with great volunteer effort and the much appreciated and long time continual financial report of the Thousand Islands Association. Run for the River, under the direction of Bridget Wright, Save the River's 5K, 10K run walk completed its 16th year here in Clayton on July 28th with 450 participants. With the help of many volunteers, we were able to have a fun, successful morning netting $14,000 for Save the River. A beach cleanup was completed on July 18th at Wellesley Island State Park, thanks to the Genesee Brewing Company and their local distributor, the A.J. Missert Company. This year, Genesee Brewing Company contributed $12,000 to Save the River from their program to help environmental organizations working on water quality issues. And additional beach cleanups were completed this summer at Ad Hoc Marina and a New York site. So while all these programs are exciting, educational, and interesting, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you that our river continues to face threats and pressure from all sides. Asian carp, the DNA of Asian carp has been found past the electric barrier out in Lake Michigan. And last season there were reports of a carp being very close to the lake. Some scientists question if the carp can survive at lake temperatures, but increasing lake temperatures increase the possibility. The Corps of Engineers has developed 
its glamorous Brandon Road EIS plan to block the invasion of the carp, which is in its final public comment period right now. And we'll be hearing more about blocking Asian carp this afternoon from Chad Lord, who is the policy director for Healing Our Waters and the Great Lakes Coalition. Pressure on Plan 2014 I mentioned earlier. Diversions, pressure to divert our precious Great Lakes and river water, which is 20% of the world's fresh water, is ramping up from communities outside the Great Lakes watershed. And Peter Annan, author of the Great Lakes Water Wars, is here to speak on that today. Invasive species, there are at least 186 species that have entered the Great Lakes and rivers ecosystem since the seaway opened. Two new species of phytoplankton were confirmed just past this past summer in the Great Lakes by Cornell scientists. Ongoing regulations without a final resolution regarding criteria for ballast water filtration among governments, shippers, and ports continues to be a threat. Climate change and more frequent storm flooding events are a threat that is affecting the river. Save the River is writing letters of support when municipalities apply for grants to upgrade their sewage plants. Pollution from agricultural runoff, river and lakefront municipalities, and residential sewers remain a threat. Plastics, both microplastics and plastic bags in the water column are a very real threat that are going to be a multi-generational problem. Great research universities around the world are studying the significance and possible solutions to this problem. But recent research has shown microplastics in human feces and the breaking down of microplastics into even smaller nanoplastics. We are very fortunate to have Dr. Sherry Mason speaking to us today on the threat of microplastics in our water. But an action that we can all take is we can make a conscious effort to move away from any products containing microplastics and quit accepting single-use plastic bags at the stores. Save the River has launched its own Replace Single-Use Plastics program in three New York State river communities, and we are planning to introduce the program in the Canadian riverfront communities this summer. It features Save the River reusable grocery totes made from recycled materials. And we'll talk more about our replaced single-use plastics later today. But enough about the threats. Save the River is healthy and growing, working all year long in cooperation with many other U.S. and Canadian environmental organizations to protect our river. We can only continue to succeed in our mission with the support of our members. We need all of you to become members of Save the River. I want to thank those of you who are members and those of you who want to become members today. Please pick up a form at the back table and fill it out. On your table, you have two petitions that we would ask you to sign after you've heard the speakers on microplastics and Asian carp. These petitions will be going out to legislators, asking them to pass legislation banning single-use plastic bags and blocking Asian carp. 